today's lecture we are going to start a new unit named steady steady state AC circuits. So when I say a AC circuit or a AC function, so AC function is a fundamentally a time varying function, a function which can vary with time, right. So they are, so AC functions are those functions which can vary with time. But in general, when we talk about the AC, sum, AC signal or an AC function, we most of the time we only talk about the we only talk about the sinusoidal signals, right? In fact, the full name of this chapter is sinusoidal steady state AC circuits. Okay, why it's so? Why we give this kind of special treatment to the sinusoidal signal? When is, let us say like FT is something A sin omega t. Okay, FT could be something else also. Okay, any time varying function. But in general, we treat, in general by default we only take the sinusoidal signal. The reason is also very obvious. One of the fundamental reason is that the sinusoidal signals are very easy to generate in the laboratory. Right. So, if, if, if I can generate my signal easily, then I can work with them also very easily. Okay, so that is the one reason why we use sinusoidal signal that more often. Other is, or in fact, the more important reason is that in uh, when we design any system, the purpose of the system is to communicate with the environment, or any practical system work with a physical medium. Okay, and you can know that our physical system or our practical systems are sinusoidal in nature. You can take the example of pe uh, pendulum. The motion of pendulum is also sinusoidal. Okay, so in general also, okay, in mechanics also, the 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 sine function is very fundamental function. So that is also a reason that key, uh, that scientists made the sinusoidal signal as a standard signal. Okay, so that's why in most of the cases, in everywhere, if no other function is defined to you, we are going to consider the sinusoidal signal as a default function. This is the more aware of formula based unit. We will see that in this entire unit, I am going to tell you uh, uh, many small small formulas and many many different variables we are going to discuss, especially in the resonance, series and parallel resonance. Okay. So, you need to <coughs> remember that formulas. Okay. So, the advice is that you should make a one formula book kind of thing. Okay. Because all these form the Q factor, bandwidth, all these parameters is going to be used so often. So, anyhow you are going to remember it. But for general practice, you need to note down all these things in a separate page. Okay, because uh, if you compare with our first unit, that we have learned so many concepts, but we, we don't really have any formula in the first unit. But on the other hand, in this unit, we are going to have a lots and lots of formulas. Okay, so the first formula is the RMS value of any sinusoidal signal, V RMS. Okay. The RMS value of a signal is defined as under root of 1 by t, 1 by t is the time period integral 0 to t v square dt. Okay, so if I have a voltage signal, so the square of a voltage signal v square integral over 0 to t, t is the capital T is the time period of the signal and then take a under root. It is the formula of the RMS value of a voltage signal. Okay, the similar formula you can also write for the RMS value of a current signal. Okay, we can also write like RMS, I RMS is equal to under root of 1 by t integral 0 to t I square dt. Okay, so if, if any arbitrary function is given to you and somebody told you to calculate the RMS value of the signal, you need to use these formulas. Okay, so let us take an example. Okay, let's calculate the RMS value of one or two signal. Is the sinusoidal signal? So come on, guys, just calculate the RMS value of the sinusoidal function. Is the sinusoidal function with time period t. Okay, the peak value of the signal is Vm. If you have given one waveform like this, a sinusoidal waveform with the time period t. Okay, then find out the RMS value of the signal. Come on. Can I have ans can I have answers from you people? Okay, let's take that. If any mathematical function is given to you, the so first thing you need to do, write down the equation. 
Okay, in case of sinusoidal signal, the equation must be Vm sin omega t, right? Where Vm is the uh, peak value of of the signal. So this is the sinusoidal signal. So first thing for any mathematical signal is write down the equation that is Vt is equal to Vm sin omega t. Now my formula is what? My formula tells me that if I need to calculate VRMS, so VRMS is what? Under root of 1 by t integral 0 to t v square dt. Okay? So in case of sinusoidal signal, my integral is omega t. Because we have a constant omega t. Okay? So in case of sinusoidal, because we know about certain thing about the sinusoidal function. Uh, one of the things which we know is what is the time period of the sinusoidal function? What is the time period of the sinusoidal function? The time period of the sinusoidal function we know that capital T is 2 pi. Okay, so in case of sinusoidal function, my formula will going to change like is will be 1 by 2 pi 0 to 2 pi v square t d omega t. Any doubts? Fine, because we know that in case of sinusoidal signal, the time period is 2 pi. Okay, so I can write down like this. Okay, I can know that this t is nothing but a 2 pi. Okay, so if we don't know this additional information for a signal, that's fine. You can evaluate the function by capital T. But because it's a sinusoidal function, we already know certain thing about it. So it's better to use it. Okay, so just put the values here. 1 upon 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi, Vm sin omega t whole square d omega t. Right? Just calculate this integral. It's a normal integral. So if we, if I'm going to calculate it, this will be something like that. This Vm square is a constant, so take it out. So it is Vm square by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi sin square omega t d omega t. Right? This is my function. So what happened when we have a sin square omega t? It's a very standard uh, uh, trigonometric operation. If I have a sin square omega t in my circuit, what we do? We convert sin square omega t into the cos omega, cos 2 omega t form. Because we know that cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sin square theta. Right? Very basic uh, trigonometric operation. So just perform that operation here. So my 2 sin square theta is basically 1 minus cos 2 theta. So sin square theta is 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. Just put the value here. So in this function, we will have Vm square by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 d omega t d omega t ok so just just uh, integrate this uh, function ok after that 1 minus cos omega t 2 just like integration of a constant is omega t integration of a cos omega t is a sin omega t so just integrate this function and you will get your answer is a vm by root 2 Okay, after I think it's, after that the, the steps are very obvious. So you will get the RMS value as a Vm by root 2. Okay, it's a very standard result. We, most of you I'm sure already knew these things that the uh, RMS value of a sinusoidal signal is Vm by root 2. Fine. Okay, so if any uh, signal is given to you, you can calculate the RMS value of it likewise. The initially we were having a function, sinusoidal function with time period t and I have just calculated the RMS value. This is one problem in which one diagram is given to you okay, and question says that find out the RMS value of this function. It is a gate 2014 problem. Problem is given to you. This is one variable x. x versus t graph is showing here. And question says that find out the RMS value 
RMS value of X. Okay. Question is clear. We need to find the RMS value of this function. And what we do? How we calculate the RMS value? For the calculation of the RMS value, we have a formula that is VRMS is equal to under root of 1 by t integral 0 to t v square dt. Now, v is a function of the variable of which you are calculating the RMS. v is a variable of which you are calculating the RMS value. So, here we have a curve. In the previous example, the advantage we have that we already knew the equation of the sinusoidal function. Okay, we knew that a sinusoidal function behaves like a Vm sin omega t. Okay, so that's why we have used the function directly. But in general, it doesn't happen. Generally, you will given a, you will give you uh, the exam, the question will be asked as that you will given a arbitrary function. So what we what you need to do, you need to first find the equation of the graph. Right, like you can see that it is a straight line. Okay, so how we find the equation of a straight line? For the equation of a straight line, you required uh, two points. Right. Here you can see that this curve starts from the origin. What is the coordinates of the origin? The coordinates of the origins are 0, 0, x, y. Right. Next, there is a next point. Of this, of this point, what is the x coordinate of this point? The x coordinate of this point is t by 2 because question has given you from 0 to t by 2, this distance. So if this is a 0, then this is the t by 2. So, the x coordinate of this point is t by 2 and what is the y coordinate? y coordinate, it, y coordinate of this point is all, already given to you as a 1. So, the y coordinate of this point is 1. Okay. So, you have both the points, right? You have a 0, 0, 1 point, you have a t by 2, comma 1 second point. Okay. So, let us name this point as an x1, y1 as an initial point and name this point as an x2, y2 as a final point. Okay, and now you have, you have a two points and you need to write the equation. We have, we know very standard equa equation of a line for a two points. If any line which is passing from two points, we can write the equation as a v y minus y1 is equal to x2 minus x1 upon y, sorry, 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 y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 into x minus x1. Okay, this is a standard equation of a line passing from a two different points, right? Here, what is my y? In my question, what is my y? y is the output axis. In our case, y is a capital X, variable x. The question is given a y as an x. What is the y1? y1 is this 0. y1 is the initial y coordinate that is 0. So, y1 is 0. What is y2? y2 is 1. Final y coordinate 1. Again, what is y1? y1 is 0. Again, what is x2? x2 is t by 2. Okay. So, it's t by 2. What is x1? x1 is 0. So, it is 0. Then, what is the x-axis? In the x-axis, we have a t, time. So, in our case, the x-coordinate is time, t. And what is x1? x1 is 0. Right? So, my equation of my variable is just simplify this function x is equal to 2 by t t. This is the equation of my function 2 t by capital T. x is equal to 2 small t by capital T. This is the equation of my function. Clear so far? Now I have a equation of my function. Once I have a equation of my function my work is done. But what I need to do just put this value here in place of v square right and just solve this integral and under under root. Okay, just a calculation is required. Once you have calculated the function, after that just the calculation is required. Just do the calculation. But tell me one thing, what is the time period of the circuit? What is the time period of the circuit? T, T, right? The time period of the circuit is T. Because what is the time period? Time period is the time in which circuits the function repeats itself. Function is repeating itself after the T, right? For first t by 2, we have a non-zero value. For next t by 2, we have a zero value. But function is repeating itself only after the t. So, time period of this function is t. 
Right? So just now just apply the formula. So in this case the XRMS XRMS will be under root of 1 by T 0 to T V square that is X square that is 2 small t by capital T square dt. I have taken the time period as a 0 to t. Okay. In the problem you can see that for the question 0 to t by 2 we have a this function for next t by 2 for next t by 2 to t we have a 0 value. Okay. So I need to split this function here. I need to split this function here first. Understand this thing. My function just 2t by t is not for entire duration. This value is only for the t, t by 2. We have a non-zero value only for first t by 2, not for the entire t. Okay, so that's why I have my answer was wrong here. You need to see that in your entire time period, the function you are calculating it in which range your function is valid. Okay? So here I need to, what I need to do, I need to split my time period that is 0 to t by 2 in this range you have a 2t by capital T square dt then here another range that is t by 2 to t. For this t by 2 to t you have nothing, you have a 0 value. So your function is 0 dt. Fine? This is the right way. Okay? So now just do the calculation accordingly and this it is a 0. So 1 by t and uh, integral 0 to t by 2 4 t square by capital T square dt. Take the constant outside. Take the constant outside. So it is 4 upon t cube upon 0 to t by 2 t square by dt and if you could if you just going to solve it you will get the same answer as somebody else is getting 0 0.408 that is the right answer actually so you just you can see that 4 by t cube actually t cube by 3 0 to t by 2 okay just put the values here so it will be 4 t cube by 8 t cube 3 so then, then t cube and t cube are cancel out each other the 4 to the 8 and you will get the 1 by root 6 and the 1 by root 6 has a value of 0 0.408. So RMS value of this function is 0 0.408. The idea is clear to you people. How to calculate the RMS value of a signal? If any signal is given to any function is given to you, if you know the, the mathematical function of that signal, then you can directly apply to it. If you don't know, then you need to first find out the function. Okay. Then, Apply it using the formula.